So you tell me when I start. Yeah, hello again uh, uh, to this uh, third or last part of uh, our session, of our second session today of the Global Hands on Universe. We have, uh, we are very, very honored actually to have a renowned scholar from Algeria, uh, Professor Jamal uh, Mimouni, uh, who will be talking about uh, African astronomy. So the title of his presentation is a quick scan of African astronomy. Uh, let me just, I could get your uh, Jamal Mimouni. Jamal Mimouni is uh, an Algerian astrophysicist. Uh, he's actively involved in the organization of a series of schools and conferences on theoretical physics as well as astrophysics. Brings together researchers from the various Algerian universities and research centers as well as a number of European and African universities. Uh, he's also an actor on the science, society, and cultural dimension of the scientific debate in the Arab Muslim world and has developed a keen interest in the philosophy of contemporary science, as well as to spreading scientific culture in societies in the developing world. He's also an actor on the science, society, and cultural dimension of the scientific debate in the Arab Muslim world, and has developed a keen interest in the philosophy of uh, contemporary science, as well as to spreading scientific culture in societies in the developing world. I've, uh, I've been actually in contact, I know uh, Professor Jamal for, for quite a long time. Uh, uh, he's a, a very knowledgeable person, wonderful person. Uh, he came on many occasions whenever we invite him to our events in Morocco. So he, he replied yes, and he was there actually to uh, impact other people and uh, make them appreciate the, the work, his scientific work and his uh, what he's doing for astronomy, and not only in his country, in the Maghreb, and also in Africa and worldwide. Welcome, uh, Professor Jamal Mimoni. Thank you very much, Hassan. You say too much about me, too much. People are going to have so high, so much high expectation that they will be, they will, they will end up frustrated. Well, I see what I knew about you. <laughs> thank you very much. You modest. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I uh, realize that it is the end of the day and that has been a long day with many interesting talks. And so I'll make it as, uh, as, as light as possible. Uh, the, 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 the title seems to be simple, says, uh, puzzling a bit, possibly a quick scan. What is scanning African astronomy? Actually, it's coming from a quiproquo that I had with the organizers. They, they asked me to do a scan of the sky or something, I didn't understand too well. I thought they were talking about the scanning the, the, the sky in a various wavelengths, the uh, uh, ultraviolet, astro ultraviolet astronomy, X-rays astronomy and so on and so forth. At the end, I understood they meant the survey, but I kept the word scan uh, for, for the, <laughs> for the, uh, for the uh, because it's nice. So it's a quick survey of African astronomy. I'll be talking about various things. First of all, I will be presenting the African Astronomical Society that many of you might know, but some might not. Then I will be talking about professional astronomy. Uh, quickly, I'll do what I call uh, 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 star hopping. I will be do, doing country hopping, like we do star hopping in amateur astronomy. And then I'll go back to outreach in astronomy. Uh, so that's my uh, little program for you. Uh, so, if you wish to have a fuller view of astronomy, both in the professional aspect of it and the socio-economical one and the outreach, then there is two great uh, uh, papers. I don't see why we don't see the whole uh, uh, screen. There's some, the, the, the bottom of the screen is not seen anyway, but there's two great papers on that which appeared in, the, uh, in Nature. Uh, maybe for the sake of recording, let me show you. Uh, oh, what's happened? Oh, I lost it. So I'm going to go back to it. Uh, sorry. Okay, so that's uh, here it is. The two papers are those two papers. Uh, in, in Nature, you can make a, a screen uh, saving and then you can on your own find them uh, on Nature. So that's for the 
say for the the sake of completeness now i go back to the uh, to the full screen and i might not have all the screen uh, at my disposal but uh, that's the way it is so let, let me see f5 right f5 good okay go back so uh, astronomy in africa uh, we know uh, much about the south african astronomy because this is the <laughs> the leading astronomy uh, uh, in Africa and even uh, worldwide, it has its uh, respectable place, but there is other places where astronomy is practiced, of course, uh, in Africa, I'll be talking about that. But before that, uh, let me present, yeah, let me present Africa. You know all Africa, right? This is Africa. You all know the countries, you know, all know the geography of Africa, all the various countries where they are situated and so on and so forth, right? It's like we show you in, uh, in astronomy, I show you the, the sky, the map sky, and I, give you, I don't give you the constellation lines. Can you find out this, uh, this scene, the Africa, the, this uh, sky scene? Not easy, right? So I'll help you in a little bit. This Orion. is the next, this is the next, uh, or, yes, no, it's not Orion. Actually, <laughs> it's, it's Scorpion. I should have uh, zoomed in the picture, but anyway. So this is uh, the map of Africa with all the countries. And this is what you saw before, the Scorp uh, Scorpion, Scorpius. And of course, people, uh, if they don't <laughs> recognize this, we can go further and give them this, <laughs> blow up the, the Scorpion. But I don't think you need that. Here, the picture, the, the Africa with all the countries, basically, and uh, frontiers, uh, geographical frontiers, political one. And it so happened that in 2019, uh, the African astronomers got their act together and they founded the African Astronomical Society that they put me uh, as the president, by the way. I don't know if it's the best choice for them, but it so happened that they elected me as the president and they elected along the way um, those people to be uh, the executive committee. So they are pretty much all over Africa. Uh, vice president and so on and so forth, secretary, uh, and in addition to ex officio, one of them you might know very well is Kevin, the director of OAD. The other one is uh, is uh, at, at the DSI, the D Directorate of Sciences and Innovation of the South African Government, because indeed FAS, and it is the reason why it might be uh, more successful than the previous AFAS who didn't get off the ground, although it tried for 10 years, is that it is founded by the South African government through the Directorate of, of Science and Innovation. And we have, a, we have a permanent secretariat and we have headquarters at the SAO uh, headquarters at Cape Town. So maybe that will help in getting uh, African astronomy, uh, the professional African astronomy uh, get off the ground because it has it had tried many times years before, but it couldn't get off the ground anyway. So uh, FAS is an organization, as I say, of professional astronomers. It, its vision is to create a globally competitive and collaborative astronomy community in Africa. And it also meant to be the voice of astronomy in Africa and to contribute to address the various challenges that Africa is facing and through the promotion and advancement of astronomy. So that's basically what FAS aims at uh, as a professional astronomy association, which has also uh, a, an outreach or amateur uh, wing, pretty uh, strong one indeed. Okay, so I'll go through that anyway. So that's the structure of AFAS. There's many committees, science committees, outreach committee, and so on and so forth. African network of women in astronomy, uh, being the last one, uh, the newest one. It is also, alors, let's start doing uh, country hopping, country hopping, like you do star hopping, hop, 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 you go from one star to another, or, or when you do the, uh, the Messier uh, marathon, you want to see all the Messier objects in one night. So I'm going to do a country hopping, hop, 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 one country to another, talking about mostly professional astronomy and the facilities that they are there, starting from the south, following the east coast, east coast, west, moving forward up, till the North Africa and then going back on the West Coast and finishing in South Africa. So that's country hopping, right? Nobody uh, still me this expression, right? 
anyway. So that's we start with actually with the, and we're going to do like in, of course, we're going to be affected by what we're called in astronomy, the selection effects. So we're going to talk about the successful places where astronomy is uh, practiced. Unfortunately, that cannot, that cannot go to all the countries and so many countries do not have even, even astronomy at any level. So it's, uh, it's pretty terrible. But anyway, so let's start with you. Ethiopia is a very bright uh, place to start with. It has a, a PhD and a MSc program, a, a great obs observational um, program. They also has, have started uh, an, an observatory which is working. In fact, two telescopes, one meter, which are uh, there, and they hope uh, to, to, to and they st start making their mark in uh, international astronomy they had last year an international workshop on galaxies. So uh, this is one bright spot, which is developing astronomy and astrophysics very really quickly. Uh, I should also say one word about Uganda, which is next to it, uh, which has uh, quite few programs and, and, uh, and, and research area in astronomy. I'm just uh, flashing this uh, slide. Uh, can, more can be said, obviously. Going up, now reaching uh, Egypt, which is the place where astronomy perhaps started thousands of years ago, I should say, and which also, by the way, is the place, although it is disputing whether the first observatory is in Cape Town or the one in Cairo University, it has even a, a, a modern legacy in astronomy, which is go back to last century already, or the, the, the previous century. Now it has various branches of astronomy, which has developed uh, in all the branches, basically. And it has quite few telescopes, uh, second to, 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 not, to South Africa in terms of various the telescopes. The biggest one being the, the one uh, of the 74 inches telescope uh, that they have. OK, uh, Algeria will be very quick uh, about Algeria. Um, oh, what I'm doing? I should go forward. Yes, Algeria too has a great historical legacy, like many countries in the in the Maghreb, it's, it go back to several, to many centuries. In fact, from the from the 10th and, and, and 11th century, it's just enough to say that Fibonacci, the great uh, uh, mathematician, which start the whole algebra and uh, in, in Europe, got groomed in in Bejaia, and he got many many years. He was uh, he was uh, uh, there in Bejaia, the school of Bejaia of astronomy and mathematics. And he learned quite a few things about the, the, the Arab mathematics and the numerals. And when he went back to Europe, he started the new, uh, new mathematics that we know. It, perhaps it is the starting point, in fact, of the whole uh, development of, of, of science in Europe, by the way. So anyway, so it has a great historical legacy. It has also the legacy of the French, which, start, which built the great uh, Observatory near Algiers, which is the third observatory in Africa after the one of Cape Town and, uh, and, uh, and, and Cairo, which has many uh, instruments. Of course, none of them still uh, working, but it is uh, uh, great instruments which are there, uh, which made uh, impact on African astronomy at that time. It has latest addition is this uh, telescope of 80 centimeters, which is unfortunately only used for pedagog pedagogical purpose, basically. It has an ambitious program of uh, research, and we have also a new uh, um, observatory which might come uh, soon, which we are in starting phases of, of test, uh, star testing in the northern part of Algeria in the Aris mountain range. Uh, next uh, uh, place, next to Algeria, Morocco, Hassan, Hassan can talk, uh, <laughs> Ton can talk much better than me about that, of course. The, the, Morocco is a tiger of Africa in astronomy, pretty much like Ethiopia. It has developed within 10, 15 years, a great uh, observatory, Ukaim Den, that I have the pleasure uh, to, to visit, by the way. And they, have, they are carrying out so many programs uh, at that uh, facility with so many uh, telescopes uh, in collaboration with many uh, observatories in the world and, and research groups. And of course, they are also uh, in addition to this uh, strong and vigorous uh, research work, they have also made the headlines when they were, they were they participated in the in the discovery of the multiple 
uh, uh, multiple planet uh, system in the known as Trappist One. So they are they were they were con they contributed to that uh, momentous discovery, uh, a system which is not too far from our solar system. Uh, I should also not go to West Africa. Uh, just to say that Nigeria, Ghana, and Burkina Faso, they have, uh, so to, in particular, Nigeria have, of course, a strong program in astronomy uh, based on radio telescopy, mostly. Uh, like, likewise for Ghana, which has uh, refurbished uh, its radio telescope, which its telescope, uh, its radio uh, antenna into a radio telescope. And Burkina Faso, which has its uh, one meter optical uh, telescope in in, uh, in, uh, uh, which unfortunately the, the area which was supposed to be the uh, presenting the telescope is now in a, in, in a high risk area. So the, the, pro, the, pro, the project has been pushed, pushed back. Uh, now uh, reaching out, many countries have been left out obviously because I have used the selection effect, as I say, talking about bright spots, not talking about everything. And uh, many countries uh, have programs uh, I'll say more in, about uh, the HES telescope in a moment, but I will, should also say that many other countries, besides those listed which have astronomy, uh, do not have at all astronomy. And this is uh, a dark, a dark uh, spot in, Algeria, in, in, in Africa. Perhaps half of the countries in Africa do not have astronomy in, at any level, whether professional or even amateur. Okay, so no, let me finish, finish, of course, with the South African uh, astronomy, the mega projects that there are, uh, first of all, being the, the first one being the, the largest telescope in the world is in the, the eyes of Africa, as it is called. It's in the Sutherland, uh, uh, and it is the, as you see here, in fact, <laughs> it's 11 meter uh, telescope. Uh, and uh, it is really impressive. I've been there. Oops, where it is doesn't want to show, but anyway. So also the, in terms of mega project, there's a Mirkat, which has given, uh, given us a tremendous uh, results recently, the past few years, which is a precursor of the SKA, the square uh, kilometer array. And in particular, it has taken the best uh, picture of the, 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 in, of the inner uh, Milky Way, and just recently, a few, few months ago, let's say, uh, it has uh, shown us uh, the, the area within, next to the enormous uh, black hole in this elliptical galaxy. And it is the best picture uh, the, and the best data uh, in radio data that we, can, we, we had of this galaxy. Okay, so in addition to that, obviously, there is this mega project of the, the, the Square Kilometer Array, which is one of the largest prog program in the world, uh, divided between Australia and South Africa. And uh, that will be the pride of Africa in the future. And we hope many can African countries can get uh, to that and, uh, and, 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 and benefit from that. One word, finally, to finish the African, the, 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 uh, the professional uh, astronomy, saying that just next to South Africa, there is in Namibia, the HES uh, gamma ray telescope, which is the, one of the largest a gamma ray telescope in the, in the world. It is taking pictures of the sky in gamma rays, not in optical wavelengths. Okay, uh, I should say that I will not be talking, and I have not talked in fact about the teaching of astronomy in Africa because there's a talk, another talk about astronomy in Africa, which will be given by uh, Miriana Povic within this uh, workshop. And she'll be talking about that. So luckily she, she, I have to leave this part out and not talk about more than what I've talked in terms of teaching of astronomy. She'll be going back to that and the astronomy in the service of uh, development. I should also mention the project of African very long baseline interferometry net network, which is also an ambitious program in radio astronomy. Now, uh, I'll be talking about uh, a few things about uh, outreach now, since I'm going to be the remaining will be about outreach. And I should also ask my friend Hassan, how much time do I have? Uh, so that I keep within time. Uh, I, it's, uh, you still have 25 minutes, uh, Jamal. 25 minutes left, great. So I'll be talking about a few exper 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 um, experiences of, I would say, 
some are between, between professional astronomy and outreach and how both uh, come together, starting with Senegal and starting with the stellar occultation of, um, uh, of um, I don't see the, uh, the, the thing of, of this asteroid, which took place uh, last year and which, uh, what is a stellar occultation? Most of you know what it is. Uh, if an object, like you see in this uh, uh, slide, come between us and a star, it may for a very short time occult the star. And from the, the geometry of the occultation, occultation, because the occultation will take, if you watch it at various places, you might see different time of, of transit, or if it's a, a, a occultation, the transit actually. And from the different time of the of the occultation by different observers distributed laterally, then you might find the shape of the object. And there's no other way, at, it is, it's an incredible way. It's a super telescope, if you, if you wish. No telescope could ever from the earth see the shape of, the, of, of, of an object like an asteroid, which is uh, uh, an object of few meters, hundreds of meters or few kilometers uh, uh, this way. And you really have to do in situ uh, watching or, or for photographing directly the object to see the shape. Now, this way of doing it is as if you have a super telescope uh, using a, a smart super telescope or doing the work of a super telescope. So this is what they have done with uh, uh, recently in uh, the, the amateur astronomers uh, uh, directed by Maram Kairi that many of you know uh, for the uh, for the, uh, yeah, yeah, so they are trying actually to do what has been done in 2017 with Aroko. Uh, you see the Aroko, uh, it was uh, this asteroid, uh, which was discovered a few years back, in fact, in, in, in 2014, and which wanted to find a target for, for New Horizon. New Horizon has uh, successfully went through, uh, has, uh, has went uh, next to, I mean, has, uh, Gone uh, as uh, made a flight by of, of, of Pluto, and they find they needed other targets because there are still some fuel and uh, uh, to, to the to new horizons. They were looking for targets, so they indeed made a successful uh, campaign of, and they saw they, that's one of the slides that they saw where you see summer stars dimming, and from the dimming they were able to uh, dimming at various locations. They were able to find this structure, and they were able to find indeed that Aroko is a bilobate object in this incredible way. So we could do that and could apply that to all the uh, asteroids and what they have done precisely last year with the, uh, the, the amateur astronomers of Senegal, and they made a contribution to world astronomy this way. So it's a successful uh, uh, coming together of amateurs and uh, Professionals at the same time, they have trained many young Senegalese to become a, a future, a future, uh, a pro, uh, I mean, a, a, um, um, astronomers indeed. So let me try to get forward. So that was the, um, sorry, uh, yes, the, the material came from NASA, it's like 19 or 20 telescopes, I believe, and they trained the people. Uh, so the occultation was the occultation of uh, the that, uh, yeah, so they are preparing for the flyby of Lucy, Lucy uh, spacecraft, which is going to be launched in a few months, uh, and which will, be, which will be flying over six, uh, six uh, asteroids uh, starting in 2024, 2025. In particular, they will be flying over that asteroid that they are going to be uh, using for occultation in 2027. And so that's the, 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 the path uh, that because there is some uncertainty and they want to, so the, the, the observers will be uh, laying along those various paths in Senegal and they will be uh, taking, uh, watching and taking pictures uh, of the, uh, of, of, of the occultation, during the occultation, and uh, preparing for the Lucy uh, spacecraft, as I say, which will be uh, going there 
and watch, observing that asteroid, and they wish to know the, the shape beforehand. So that's, they, they, they do a lot of training of young people, daytime and nighttime training. And ultimately, they were able to uh, observe the polymel, polymele, that's the name of the asteroids occupation in Senegal, although very, in a very difficult way, only the, the weather was not uh, uh, at, the, at the rendezvous and they had only once one place where they were, they were able to do the observation. That's a bad luck. It happened sometimes, yet they were able to, to see what, as you see now, you see the dimming of that uh, asteroid for 1.7 seconds. And from that, they were able to, uh, to establish the life curve of the, of the, of the polymelase asteroid. They will need, actually, they will have needed more than one location to find the shape, but at least they were able to, uh, to ascertain the, the, possibly the, 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 uh, uh, its, uh, its size but not more, not the shape as they were hoping, although all the observations were made in other places in the world. So I do not know the, at the end whether they were able to, to fix a little bit the shape of the asteroids. Anyway, so that's one great uh, achievement which mixed the uh, amateur astronomy and professional astronomy for the good of each of one or each of them, because the amateurs, uh, which were mostly students and young researchers, might become professional astronomers anyway. And they have been training uh, this. 20 or 30 people in the, along the way and did a great work. So let me now talk about outreaching now uh, for the, the more basic uh, way of doing outreaching and what I call outreaching for upliftment of progress. Outreaching has a great role to play uh, in societies. As I say here, the working of science and the grandiose cosmic pictures it brings is a rampart against irrational thinking which is certainly an impediment to social development. So as much we, we do our twitching for astronomy and also for sciences in general, as much you are helping the, so your societies to go forward and to get enlightened and, 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 and get uh, the young people get vocations and so on and so forth. So that's what the, 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 the side af, uh, uh, aspect of our twitching. Let me stay in Senegal before going to another spot and I'm mostly I'll be done. Hassan, don't look at me although your picture is looking at me, not you, a real, real uh, Hassan. So Senegal to Space Bus 2015, the caravan, and the caravan I'll show this, it's a great experience where people go uh, to the countryside and spread astronomy and science in general. There is such experiences which has been done, I know in Morocco, but also in Ethiopia, in Algeria, and now in Senegal, I'll be presenting a few pictures of that, the Bus de l'Espace uh, in 2015, what they have been, it's, it's just a, a series of pictures. I'm not going to comment uh, to say that and that's Maram Kaere, by the way, who has organized that along with the Society Association Senegalaise for la Promotion d'Astronomie. Uh, uh, oui, alors, uh, okay. So they go in, uh, in various places in the countryside, they meet the people uh, here, the mostly uh, possibly uh, high school uh, kids, uh, go to places where none have gone. <laughs> Uh, do experiments in all kinds of, uh, of sciences. Uh, they meet people uh, so often in these favored uh, countries, uh, uh, places in the country. Uh, it's a great mixing of, uh, of <laughs> I mean, people uh, who have done astronomy uh, meet uh, the, 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 the simple people. And so, that was one experience in, uh, do, in doing outreach, going to the people and not waiting for the people to come to them. That was, donc one, uh, uh, that was in Senegal. Let me talk now to uh, outreach in Algeria because I know it better. There's other places who are doing great, play, great work in outreach uh, uh, throughout Africa, but I had to, to choose some places. Let me do talk about, in the, in the few in minutes I, I have left, about outreach in Africa, and it will mostly be pictures and some comments basically. Uh, so maybe I should, uh, before doing the pictures, showing you the, oops. This is a small video. I don't know why it doesn't work. Okay, let me, ah, <laughs> I lost it. Okay. Uh, ask Rosa, video. ask Rosa to play it, Jamal. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I'll do it now. <laughs> so that's uh, uh, the, the ambiance, to give you the ambiance when you do outreach with the, uh, you have to stop sharing and share again. 
clicking on sound, sharing sound on your computer. Stop sharing your image. And when you share again, on the bottom part of Zoom, there is a square that you have to select, choosing to share the sound of your computer. That's not, uh, thank you very much, uh, Rosa. It's fine, it's, it's done, it's finished. It was just oh. uh, uh, to put you in the ambiance and that's, that was, uh, that, that was the derivative. So let me go back to the, uh, to the, uh, the presentation. There's a few more slides. Hassan, how much time do I have left? I still have 14 minutes, just take your time. 14, it's more than I need, my friend. Okay. I'm yeah. going to be, uh, okay. Because I actually, let me say it's a small secret, but nobody else should uh, share it after what I said. I thought I had 20 minutes because oh. I see everywhere 20 minutes. And uh, luckily I asked Dora uh, a few minutes ago, or just before the presentation, how much I said, uh, I had, I say, she said 45 minutes. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's an ocean of time. But anyway, I'm going to keep uh, talking for five, 10 minutes and I'll stop and nice. leave the time for the questions. Yeah. That's good. So more, more, more nice pictures of outreach with the young people here, the sky map, mobile sky map uh, from a, a good friend of Oman who has made it available, which is in Arabic, and he has made it available. So we're using it uh, to explain people the, 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 the motions of the, of, the, of the stars, the constellations, and what you see and not see. Of course, the, 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 the part which is covering uh, the uh, the, the, what is under the horizon uh, has been left off, but otherwise it's a mobile that it's a mobile sky, um, um, map. Okay, uh, in various uh, meeting with people, with the uh, with the group of people, we do what we all, all of you are doing: outreach, make people wondering, amazed by by the, the sky, by the the, the group. Uh, scout groups also are uh, also been visited. Uh, we also had uh, this. Uh, Every year we are holding in Algeria a, a festival of a popular astronomy almost every year. And Hassan has been to one of them anyway. <laughs> uh, and so you see each one, each time with the, uh, with the team. And so that's the, some of the pictures of uh, what is going on, lectures, uh, conference, um, the workshops, uh, and so on and so forth. So I'm going back, sorry. I don't know why it's going. Oops, okay. Doing, uh, of course, what amateur astronomy are doing best, best watching uh, celestial phenomena when they come. Here, this is a uh, 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 total uh, uh, lunar eclipse over the University of Constantine, my university, uh, and uh, with the with people. Uh, observation of uh, transits of uh, various things doing with the people, going to schools. This is a uh, part of the uh, program, African program of uh, uh, dark sky that we also uh, were involved with, involved with schools to that. Uh, um, uh, uh, the yearly competitions that we're organizing also, it just as an example of great, uh, uh, play, uh, I mean, activity, we do uh, uh, take the best of the students in the all the high schools in our region of 50 high schools, we bring them together we make them, uh, we, they, they go to competition and uh, the, uh, the prize is quite exceptional. I hope I'm not going to make uh, people jealous here, but every year we go to a great destination. Here it is the, uh, we went to Salt with the, with the laureates of that year. Uh, we went then to Grand Telescopio Canarias. Uh, each year it's a great uh, uh, destination. This is the, uh, the, il, the 10 and a half, well, what is the, the diameter of the ground uh, it's, it's 10 and a half meter, I think, it's a little bit less than the, the Sol telescope. Uh, Nobeyama radio telescope and Mount Fuji uh, with the laureates of that year. So this is, it, this was, as I say, it's a, it's, it's a competition, a science competition, but mostly in astronomy or heavily, heavily uh, 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 leaning to astronomy. Uh, this is in CERN, uh, LHC, they have seen the LHC, uh, the, the laureates of 2014, uh, here in the, in the heart of the beast, uh, which was just closed, by the way, for the few months, and we were able to go inside the LHC Large Hadron Collider. The next year, it was uh, ITER, the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor in France, which was in Cadarache, 
uh, next to uh, in the southern part of France, uh, to the to the Suprator, uh, also visited one of the most exclusive uh, um, uh, places where uh, fish, they are trying to make fusion uh, happening. Uh, visiting the uh, Observatoire de Haute Provence, where the first exoplanet was discovered. That's year after year. Huh? That's not the same team. Every time it's a team of of uh, winners of laureates who are going to those places, shooting at the moon from the uh, I don't see the way it is. It's from the uh, the plateau de the Calerne in France, where you see live the laser going out and going to the moon through this telescope. And then or this telescope at least is observing the the photon coming back. That's with the, the with the uh, laureates of the, of the year after. Uh, then of course the great the all American eclipse that was in 2017. And we thank Vivian, Vivian White, if she is with us today or right now, she should be thanked because she helped a lot in the logistic. We're in the, the Chicago area. And we went with the group of uh, students watching uh, this uh, great eclipse, this great American eclipse uh, in 2017. Uh, that was, that's what amateur astronomers, when they have, <laughs> we can do with the people and make them uh, excited for astronomy. So I'm trying to go forward, but I don't know why it's going backward. Yeah, I will say all the places which are not listed here and we stop, that was in the, 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 the Dead Sea, went to Dead sea. we went to, first of all, more uh, Poland afterwards. Poland, we visited the, the, the house of Copernicus, the, of Marie Curie, uh, various places there in Poland. Then the year after went to the Dead Sea, we saw the, of course, the, uh, the the uh, what is called uh, the great uh, place uh, uh, of the Aram, uh, the um, one of the wonders of the world. I it is slipping my my lip right now. Uh, there in 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 Jordan and went to the uh, Middle East also accelerators and so on so forth. Anyway, so we're making it fun. People who are, who are the best in science, they should be rewarded in the best way, and that's what we have been doing throughout the years in uh, in, in rewarding the best students in science. Uh, doing that, so that was the kind of uh, the uh, the kind of outreach. Some of the beautiful example of outreach we are doing is to some of the members of uh, my association uh, visiting the Hogard in the south part of Algeria. And with that, I'll be finishing basically with those pictures of the group uh, from far away. And I will say from the Hogard, Algeria with love, and from the southern part of Al of Africa, from Switzerland. South Africa with love. And thank you very much. How much time do I have, uh, Hassan? Maybe I can reclaim a few minutes. Yes, you still have like uh, six minutes left if you want to. OK, glorious Africa. I'll end up with that, possibly. Uh, that okay. will be a, a ode to Africa. Africa is so much put down by its, uh, by its various miseries and so on and so forth. I wish it for the day, Africa Day, to say what will be the world without Africa. Why Africa, we have, it is glorious Africa. So first of all, I say, can you imagine a map of the world without Africa? Your, Europe will be hanging above nothing. There'll be nothing in Europe. It's incredible. That will be a catastrophe, right? And what I call a geographical aberration. Can you imagine of the history of the world without Africa? The Greek, uh, Egypt, ancient Egypt, Alexandria will not be there. Uh, the, 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 the kingdom of Numidia, of Nubia, the Songhai Empire, etc. Impossible to imagine the history of the world without Africa. It will be so much uh, missing things. Can you imagine a map of the world economy without Africa? They have exploited it so much. All the goods and uh, oil and minerals have come from Africa and they have been making uh, uh, the Western world blossom by plundering Africa, really and by not giving the right value and the, what will be the co economy of the West without what they have taken from Africa. Can you imagine a human geography world map without Africa? You will be talking about 1.4 billion people strong, which will be missing from that map. Can you imagine the world of science without Africa? It's salt has the coming SKA world-class facilities and it's budding scientific community will not be there. There's more to that. You can go back to the site of the African Astronomical Society. There's more uh, pearls and, on that, but that's what I wish it to leave as a, as a, as a message. Africa, 
uh, despite its various problems of underdevelopment and wars and so on, which worked on uh, uh, the, uh, I mean, uh, I mean uh, continent, we have much, the world uh, I mean, owes much to Africa and Africa should be in the future making more an impact on the world. That's what I could say as <laughs> African, as a president of the African Islamic Society. And with that, I will be concluding at last. Thank you all for your patience. I know it's the last talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Professor Shaman uh, Mimoui, for this, uh, as you say, this scan of astronomy in, uh, in Africa. It was great actually to know the different uh, outreach activities. And I know there are more, there are a lot of other uh, outreach activities in, in, in Africa. And you are also leading, you didn't talk about that, the planetarium uh, project. Uh, uh, maybe you could say a few words later on on, on that. Uh, so, uh, as you said, uh, uh, we, we can't we can't imagine world without Africa. Uh, and and Rosa had this very nice. Uh, she said, oh, I can't imagine yeah. Africa without without the rest of the world." Well, what I would answer to that is actually uh, uh, we, we should, as humans, actually look at the skies and forget about the borders and forget about uh, uh, this very tiny, uh, small uh, earth that we are li living in. Uh, it's, it's, it's sufficient for all of us to live and to help each other and to uh, spread peace and knowledge to, to all to all uh, to all the, the humans basically and we look for the skies and look for other to go to other worlds uh, uh, we, should, we should somehow as astronomers this is my philosophy is to say that we have only one sky uh, and this sky is, is all ours actually in, in, in sense that uh, uh, we should teach our kids to uh, to love each other to love the human beings as humans uh, rather than saying that I am from this part of the world or that part of the world. Well, enough uh, philosophy. Uh -huh. Great talk, Jamel. Uh, this, is, uh, this is very good. Yeah, Carl, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I, actually, I think we'd like to nominate Hussein for president of the world, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jamal, that was fantastic. Thank you so much. Hey, you know, uh, I, I, I know I'm uh, sounding like a terrible broken record. But, you know, these EV scopes, they might be too tiny for you, like four inch diameter. But imagine if we had 100 of those uh, on the next asteroid. They, they've tried some campaigns, 100 of them, you know, in different weather, you know, different parts of the thing. And you, and you could build a, you know, may go a little bit fainter by signal averaging the various EV scopes. Seems to me there might be a global fit that, to the whole process that even though the aperture is small, you know, co-adding statistical summing might help us get the asteroid morphology down. But that was really beautiful work. And I wonder if the EV scopes might play a future role, perhaps. Yeah, it's, they are great scopes. And I think that, uh, of course, the, the, the price is not, uh, is not, is not small. <laughs> but if we can find, uh, uh, I mean, uh, financing and having the serious associations throughout Africa or the world in general, uh, there to, uh, to use them and uh, teach the, the people how to use them best. Of course, they are automatic, so they, they are, there's not much teaching yeah. to do as far as the, put, the, the, the setting them. But in terms of using it, uh, I mean, usefully, I think it will be a great project. We need the yeah. people financing those things and, and find the right associations which can put them in the best use. Yeah, I, I think it's ingenious what you've done. You know, you're collaborating a bunch of disparate groups all on one project. That that and you know so everybody becomes a, something a part of something greater. I think that's very ingenious, Jamal. Appreciate that. Okay, and I have something to say too. I think after I met you, and I haven't known you that long, but it's hard to imagine a world without you. You really are <laughs> African astronomy, and uh, I truly, truly appreciate seeing you here. It's very nice to listen to you talk. And uh, you have wonderful ideas. Keep expanding them and keep growing. And I would glad to help you in any way I can to keep things going in Africa the way you want them to go. 
I think what we've been doing in Uganda has been very great. They are very receptive to what we're doing. And I think part of that is you and your drive. So thank you. Well, you are, you are touching my heart. I mean, really, uh, Bonnie. Uh, I think that, uh, of course, uh, you touch the heart of Hassan more. I mean, Carl, when he says he should be the president of the world, but you touch <laughs> the heart also in some little way. Uh, indeed, uh, as Sometrika and the whole uh, thing that you are doing with the Jehu, I mean, for the uh, uh, w w need to be uh, developed and to be expanded to throughout Africa. And we have talked about it at length, yet we have not found the, the, the right mechanism for that. What you are doing... Uh, in, in Uganda is perhaps is, is, will, will be a spear, will spearhead uh, maybe the whole effort. I know you are doing the same thing in Morocco quite successfully. With us too, we have a group uh, working with uh, Astrometrica, yet uh, to make it at the continental level, it's worth the effort. And I do hope to work on that with Nirouj, that you know, the, the, the head of the outreach of EFAST in that respect, so that we really get this great project uh, uh, to be an African based and African uh, that has an African dimension. That I understand. If I can help you in any way, let me know. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't have any questions in the Q&A section. Uh, I, guess, uh, I would like to, to use one minute since yeah, okay. Carl and Hamal and you are here to remind that COVID is going to go away. And uh, Bonnie already started uh, nagging me about uh, the, the next regional meeting. So you guys should start thinking about, you know, whenever this nasty bug goes away, we have to retake this um, opportunity. And Hamal, now that you are the head of um, the, the Africa, uh, that's right. African African. I think it's it's important to to start this uh, trend of having the teacher training. Maybe um, maybe spread in different regions using the regional offices or something like that. It doesn't have to be GHU. It doesn't have to be GTP. It can be any any teacher training that you find valuable or adapted hopefully and better if it is decolonized so that it's uh, mimicking the reality of each region where this is uh, going on. But please consider that in your to-do list so that we are ready for when the, the, the bug is gone. Yes, having Thank you. Regional, regional meetings is a wonderful thing to do. And I think uh, people grow a lot from them. So, those are my thoughts. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. We were planning for a second regional meeting in Egypt, but unfortunately, because of COVID, we couldn't uh, do it. But uh, I second Rosa's uh, idea is actually to uh, restart thinking about uh, another regional meeting, maybe many regional meetings, because Africa is huge. Uh, and it's uh, it's time for Jiu actually to spread because uh, the concept is, uh, is successful so far and, and uh, why not actually adopt it everywhere? Well, I think starting with one and then growing from there. So it, it needs to be planned carefully and uh, take care of what we need to take care of in that region and mm. then uh, getting one to work, then finding out about the next region and getting it to work there because every region is different. And um, it needs to focus on what the people need. Uh, that's my major concern, the kinds of things the people need that they will accept and remember and then move on with. Okay. Yeah. Jamal, can you brief us like uh, on some success stories uh, of the AFAS so far? I know this uh, uh, pandemic actually is somehow slowed down the many of the projects that you've had, but uh, I know that you, you are on many uh, uh, very nice projects. Uh, can you just maybe brief us on a few of these and? Uh, 
Well, uh, there is, of course, there are uh, uh, professional uh, projects and, uh, and initiatives, and there are some which are outreach. Well, let me just talk about the outreach ones, which actually would pretty much didn't succeed in getting off the ground. Let me be true, truthful to you. Uh, some of them at which, some of them have been going very well. We have uh, done great uh, campaign of, uh, of observing the eclipse, the, the transits and so on and so forth uh, at the end. But some which are more, uh, I mean, more important as far as I'm concerned, two of them, let me talk about two of them, two projects, uh, two, uh, two, uh, two, uh, two, um, which I, I very much like it, but we didn't get off the ground. Maybe you can, all of you can help us. So the first one is affordable, portable planetarium. Planetarium is a great uh, teaching uh, tool, and it should be available, it should be made available to all the societies, clubs, and associations of schools and so on. Yet the, its cost is incredibly high in comparing to its value, per, uh, materially speaking. You go to a, to a, a, I mean, a commercial a company, it costs 20, 30,000 uh, euros or dollars to get uh, a five, six meters planetarium, while if you construct it from scratch, it will cost you, and that's our pr uh, project, to have a, a planetarium, high quality planetarium for less than $3,000, the dome and the projector. So uh, we have been trying uh, various concepts. Uh, we didn't get help from, from a commercial, <laughs> as a, I mean, producer, because they are not going to help us to bring down the cost, divided the cost by a factor of 10. That's what I want. From $30,000, like if you go to the, to the to, to some of the producers, I'm not mentioning the names, even the cheapest one, it will be twenty to thousand three thirty thousand dollars for a planetarium of six meters. Uh, uh, yet, yeah. and we want to divide the cost by ten. We have been trying various concepts. If some people can help us in in in, in substantial in, in, in bringing down in, in, in getting the the end the, pro, uh, the dome, we want to make the dome uh, available. A dome is something like which cost uh, uh, from the commercial company something like eight nine thousand dollars. If you go to the to the China or to the Chinese producers, it's one thousand dollars. We think that it should not cost more than four hundred or five hundred dollars uh, in terms of the cost of the sewing, I mean the, the, the material, the fabric, and the sewing. The the, the the projector also should we should bring should be able to bring the cost down to uh, not more, more than, no more than $1,500, $2,000. So that's one big project we wish, and people can help us in that. If we have planetarium available widely to all the groups who wish one, wow. uh, I think that will be a great way of developing astronomy. It is, of course, the not the real sky. It is a simulated one, but it's such a great pedagogical, educational things, and you can do uh, that one thing. The second thing is the radio telescope, uh, educational radio telescope, the way that Jehu has developed, by the way, or the uh, Jehu Europe, but they have not shared with us the, the kits. We want to have a kit. Uh, it will be more expensive than the planetarium, possibly, but we want to, to, to initiate the people, African people in particular, but also uh, worldwide, to the techniques of radio astronomy. It's another level of expertise than, uh, than, uh, than telescopes uh, um, uh, building, of course. But yet, it is also the way of Africa. Africa is developing the SKA, it has a Mirkat, and we wish it, and it has so many skills that bring, come together, advanced skills, not the skills that you need, like in optics or whatever, like for telescopes and so on and so forth. And we wanted to have a cheap, affordable radio telescope concept, and that could be not necessarily African, it can be uh, for the whole uh, community of uh, outreach community. So that's two big uh, projects that we had. And we, we make some headway, but not enough. So if people can help us in, 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 in crystallizing the idea and making that work, that would be a great way towards uh, helping the outreach, the, the amateurs astronomers worldwide. Not go to the to the to the to the <laughs> to this incredibly high priced uh, uh, planetarium, uh, which is ten times the cost of the the various elements. That's what I wish you to say in a short while. I don't know if it's uh, it is useful what I have said. Yeah, it's great. No, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jamal. Uh, do you have any questions? Other questions for Jamal? Any comments? Well, if not, uh, so let's uh, applaud Jamal again. Let's uh, thank him very much for accepting our invitation and uh, for his very uh, inspiring talk. Uh, and thank you all for staying uh, with me. Some of you are staying late, some of you are uh, uh, still uh, in midday. 
Well, thank you all for uh, coming to the second session and uh, participating uh, with us. So yeah. I'll give the floor now to Gustavo. Yeah, thank you, Hassan. Thank you, Hamal, for the wonderful presentation. I was really excited thank to see. Oh. Yeah, Carl. Oh, I, I just wanted to thank Jamal again. And thank you, Hassan. Uh, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. But uh, it was wonderful to see how how Astronomy Africa is developing so fast and there's so much potential.